Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome back to the Bandana Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and today we're going to be talking about a very sketchy business concept in the world, really, but I'm going to be primarily focusing on the United States and China in this episode. I am going to be discussing the sketchy business of electronic waste management, And when I say electronic waste management, I'm particularly referring to how the U.S. sets up local businesses that handle the collection of electronic waste around from whoever has electronic waste, whether that be a cell phone, tablet, laptop, PC, landline, you name it. I don't know how it is in other countries, but in the U.S. there are laws that are in place that say that you cannot dispose of electronic waste through your regular trash or garbage pickup because it is so toxic to the environment and to human health. So what they do instead is they will contract with other disposal um companies around the country and they are the ones that handle electronic waste and if you don't know i'll kind of elaborate on this throughout the episode but electronic waste is so toxic because it exposes humans to dangerous levels of toxic metals such as mercury and lord knows what arsenic I also, I promised I researched everything. I did a class project on this earlier in the semester, which is why I'm, I like to think that I'm well versed in everything. I'm just trying to <laughs> recite information on the spot because this is a, this isn't a scripted pro- podcast. Let's, let's get that straight. Sometimes whenever I take like a long time to describe and retell information, I take a long time, I do admit that, and it is because this podcast is mainly unscripted. I do my best to research before, obviously, because I do not want to spread misinformation, but just know that I am reciting everything (laughs) off of the top of my head. Anyways, let's get into why electronic waste industries in the U.S. are very sketchy. So there are kind of two facets to its sketchiness. The first one is the disclosure of the spending in from the states to uh, manage electronic waste. And the second facet is the exportation laws that are in place. So the first facet that I want to discuss is the disclosure of spending by the states. In my project, I had to like come up with a budget for a theoretical management reformation program. And in the process of doing that, I had to research the spending that each state has established for electronic waste management. And I found that not all states are legally required to disclose the amounts they spend, if any at all, um, for two reasons. One, it's not In some states, it's not even, like, mandated by the state. It's purely local um, governments that are doing so. So it's kind of hard to, like, go to each city and total up that amount for the state, which is one thing. But, like, another thing is if it's a state like Texas, for example, does this, um, they are not permitted. Or, I mean, it's not that they're not permitted, but they're not, like, legally required to disclose their spending because they are exempt from disclosing spending on information like this through the Water Act, I think it's called. And basically how that happens is the Water Act allows companies to not disclose the, or at least not publicly disclose the like pollution amounts and spending amounts and how things are being done, which is very sketchy. Um, And then the second facet that I wanted to talk about is electronic waste exportation. So when we're talking about electronic waste exportation in uh, two other countries, the main countries that are receiving these exports are China definitely being number one. And then I don't know the particular order after that, but I know some other countries are Brazil, um, some Middle Eastern countries... 
and I can't remember the other country, but it is some sort of Asian country. But anyways, we're going to focus on China because that's what I researched. So there is a city in China that I focused on called Guiyu. It is located in the, I mean, not the county. They don't use counties. They use provinces in China. It is located in the Guangdong province. Not to be confused with Providence, the capital of Rhode Island. So I mentioned at the beginning of this episode that electronic waste poses human health risks through toxic metal exposure. But despite these risks, countries, particularly lower income countries like China and Brazil and many other Asian countries, kind of accept this as a a practice because they have economic gains through these exports through cheap labor. I would say that that's kind of sketchy, but here's really what the sketchy part of this second facet is. So um, the United Nations has established this set of rules around uh, hazardous waste exportations, including electronic waste, and they've basically said this cannot be done. However, in the U.S., it is still being done because the U.S. Congress has failed to pass legislation to, like, completely follow these U.N. rules. So because the U.S. has not taken their domestic part in uh, ensuring the ban of electronic waste exportation, it's still being allowed in the U.S. And that's, I wouldn't say, okay, I wouldn't say it's sketchy, but it's definitely, like, not something you would want to see out of the U.S., especially considering that the U.N. has already established such rules banning exportations. Not that this really pertains to the sketchiness of the electronic waste management industry, but it's just a little tidbit that I did pick up when I was researching everything. So in the states that I was able to find budget details regarding electronic waste management reformation, or not reformation, but like spending on electronic waste management have been published, I found that California has spent... I'm trying to remember. California has spent a couple hundred thousand, maybe. I don't know, because also the the latest stats that I was able to find was or are from like the late 2000s. So like, two th- oh, that brings me to another point. I'll get back to the budget stuff, but that brings me to another point. So when I was researching the budget details for each state, I noticed that in the states that do have laws regulating electronic waste and a published budget um, disclosing the amount that they spend on electronic waste. I found that a lot of these were passed in 2008, 2009, and I'm wondering if something happened during that time besides the uh, recession that influenced this sudden surge of electronic waste management reformation laws to occur. So I I did try to look into it, but I couldn't really find anything. But it did make me really curious as to what the timeline was um, during that time. But anyway, so yeah, I found that California uh, spent a couple hundred thousand per year on their electronic waste industry. And then in New York... And I'm talking the state, or I mean, not the state, the city. New York City spends $2 million per year on electronic waste management. And this is really based on the fiscal year budget that was published by the city. So it has certainly maybe fluctuated as uh, years have gone on, but during the most recent year or fiscal year they've spent two million on electronic waste management and of course it makes sense because new york is just really populated in general but yeah i found it really surprising to see that (laughs) there is a city in the u.s that spends that much on electronic waste management and of course because other states do not disclose the amount that they spend on electronic waste New York is probably the city and really the state that spends the most out of all 50 states plus D.C. I should also mention 
that I was doing research on just the 50 states in D.C., and I didn't really extend it into the overseas U.S. territories. But I did also remember that when I looked into, like, Hawaii and Alaska, I did surprisingly find information on them. So Hawaii definitely has its own electronic waste system because it's not a part a of the... 48 contiguous United States and uh, I of course I don't remember how much they spend on it but I did find out that they do have their own state program however in Alaska it is also not part of the 48 contiguous states of course but I did see that they don't have a state program but they do publicly encourage their residents to recycle electronic waste somehow on their own because they do acknowledge that it does pose very harmful risks to humans to wildlife to the environment and really and er, any and everybody so i was impressed that alaska has taken steps like that to address the issue i don't know who made the decision to publish that information but thank you to whoever that was it was very helpful to me and i'm sure helpful to your residents I'm not really sure what else to mention. I think I've kind of just briefly gone over why the industry is so sketchy. And, oh, I I almost forgot. So, Guiyu, China is the city that is notable for having the most electronic waste in a single city worldwide. And because they have so much waste, it is harming the people there it's harming the cleanup workers that are working there it's harming the environment and the wildlife there i was looking at pictures and there's almost no wildlife there it's very urbanized in a negative way so there are like industries there that mainly focus on electronic waste and really that's that's the point of their government and their economy most of their revenue and their income is through cheap labor um from the cleanup workers that are handling the electronic waste so yeah that was the episode it's a very unfortunate episode that i covered today but i do hope that action is taken sometime during my life hopefully as soon as possible but sometime soon and uh i will talk to you next time i i know i say see you next time but this is a podcast so i don't really see you but i will talk to you next week and until then One step backwards, two steps forward. Adios. Have a good day.